Last week we went to the New World with Christopher Columbus and today we're continuing our exploration of the New World but we're going south as well. Now on my map you can see the different parts of America. North America at the top, South America at the bottom and then it's almost like a bridge in the middle holding them together that's quite thin called Central America and we'll be referring to those different things as we go through today. Christopher Columbus and Amerigo Vespucci called America a new world because they'd never seen it before but people had been living in this new world for thousands of years before Columbus or Amerigo ever arrived. These Native American peoples are sometimes called Indians because Columbus gave them this name, thinking that he had reached India. But of course, Columbus had not reached India at all. He'd reached the Americas. There are two American continents, North America, the continent on the top of your map, and South America, the continent at the bottom. The bridge of land that links them together is called Central America. When Columbus landed in the New World, he landed on islands just across from Central America. He wrote in his journal, men and women came out to meet us. Their hair is black and short in front, combed forward. They paint themselves with black and white. Some have scars on their bodies. They tell me that these scars come from battles with other peoples who live nearby and who try to capture them and make them slaves. Central America had its own empires during the Middle Ages and those empires fought wars with each other, just like the empires in Europe and Asia. The first great empire of Central America was the Mayan Empire. The Mayans lived on the Yucatan Peninsula, which lies between the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Today, the Yucatan Peninsula is part of Mexico. And to show you on the map there, you can see the Yucatan Peninsula just here. The Mayans began to build great cities at the same time that Rome was falling apart. These cities lasted for hundreds of years, but not all the Mayans lived in their cities. Only the most powerful people, kings, noblemen and governors, lived in the cities. The less important Mayans, such as farmers and craftsmen, lived in the jungles of Central America and came to cities to trade and to worship the gods. Worshipping the gods was an important part of Mayan life. Stone pyramids with temples on top were built in all of the Mayan cities. The Mayan kings who sacrificed in these temples were said to be descended from the sun god. They tried to make themselves look godlike by filling their, filing their front teeth into fangs and painting their faces. When the kings were babies, their mothers would tie pieces of wood tightly round their heads. The wood made their skulls grow up into a peak. So Mayan kings had heads that sloped straight back from their eyebrows and were pointed on top, a sign of divine power. The Mayans also thought that gods were cross-eyed so a king's mother would often tie a little toy to the front of her baby's hair. The toy hung down between the baby's eyes so that he had to cross his eyes to look at it. Because the Mayans believed that their kings were divine, they allowed the kings to have complete power. Over in Europe, other nations like England were beginning to put limits on the powers of the king. But in Central America, the king could still declare any law and have it carried out. Despite his power, a Mayan king did have one unpleasant job to do. The Mayans fought many wars against the other Central American tribes around them. They believed that the gods would come down into the world of men and give them victory, but only if the king opened a door for the gods by shedding some of his own blood. So before a battle, the king had to pierce his ear or his finger or nose and let the blood run out. And often the Mayans would sacrifice their captives from a battle to give more blood to the gods. Even the Mayan games ended in bloodshed. The Mayans liked to play a ball game in which the players tried to knock a ball through a ring 20 feet off the ground. They were, not allowed, they were allowed to use their elbows, wrists and hips, but not their hands or feet. As soon as one player hit the ball through the ring, he was declared the winner. He was given jade necklaces, gold bracelets and sacks full of treasure. The losers were taken up into the temple and had their heads cut off. The huge Mayan cities lasted for centuries, but late in the Middle Ages, the Mayan people began to leave their cities. They deserted their temples and their houses. Grass and jungle weeds began to grow over the stones. Eventually, the cities crumbled away into the jungle. What happened? The cities grew so big, the ground around them couldn't grow enough food to support the city's inhabitants. 
Hurricanes and earthquakes swept across the Yucatan Peninsula, wrecking houses and temples. The people were growing tired of the cruelty and violence of their kings. And another Central American tribe, the Aztecs, was growing stronger and attacking the Mayan cities with its armies. The Mayan Empire began to crumble. By the time Columbus arrived, the Mayan people no longer had an empire. They lived in small, separate tribes throughout the land they had once ruled, and the Aztecs had become the greatest nation in Central America. It's one of the patterns we see, isn't it, that kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. So I want you to think, as well as the Mayans, what other kingdoms have you learnt about which have risen and fallen through the story of the world course? <laughs>